Coming to you from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee, this is the Quinn Spin. Hey now! And welcome once again, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, one and all, to a brand new edition of... The Quinn Spin. I'm your host, Quinn. I'm back here on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Stitcher, YouTube, and more for another rousing and riveting installment of the official podcast of Underground Music Collective. You just heard Rebel Nine's All I Become, our opening theme song here at The Quinn Spin, since the great year of 2014, and it will be until the very end of days. Today on the show, I am joined by Andre Cataldo of the artist project Dear Genre, based out in St. Louis. They just released a new EP called Sounds, Silences. It's out now. And we hear about the EP. It's songs that already exist, but reimagined for you. And we get to hear about the creative process behind that. What else is to come in 2023? The music community out there in St. Louis and much more. So I'm going to take you right to it. Enjoy the episode. All right, we are back here on the Quinn Spin. As I mentioned at the top of the show, we have joining us from St. Louis, Missouri, not too far from us here in Nashville, Andre Cataldo of Dear Genre. Of course, they just released an EP, Sound Silences. We're going to hear all about that. They released that yesterday as of premiere day, and there's more new music coming, but we'll get to all that. First, Andre, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, how are you? Doing well, doing well. Just another day in paradise. How are you doing? Feeling good. Thanks for having me here. This is an exciting time to be on the show, man. It sure is. Yeah, it's re- it's a really exciting year around here, and we're glad you can be a part of it. And we'll let you introduce yourself to our audience as well. We'll let them get to know you a little bit. And I ask every guest of the show three standard questions to start us off. Those three questions are, who are you? What are your passions? And why on earth would you want to come on the Quinn Spin in year 10? Year 10. Wow. Year 10. <laughs> Can't believe it, but it's the truth. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, I'm Andre Cataldo. Hello, everybody. Um, I play music under the name Dear Genre. So I started this project back in uh, 2010. And ever since then, I just wanted another name to go under other than my my normal name, Andre Cataldo. thought that was a little boring. So I came up with Dear Genre, and it's worked out a lot better. There you go. Um, for me, I am put on earth to do music. Uh, I truly believe that. Um, I've tried a lot of things under the sun in my 30 years, and nothing brings me the joy and the happiness and the uh, electricity that playing and making music does. I just think it's there's 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 nothing like it in the world. And ever since I was a little little baby, I knew that I was put on this earth to make music. Um, the third question was, why on earth would you want to come on this show of all the shows? Oh, well, man, uh, the second I found out about you on uh, Instagram, I just thought not only, um, well, did I, did I like your personality and your character, but been listening to your interviews and, and, um, and the kind of the, the stuff you were talking to your to your guests about um i really liked the the depth of your questions and i liked the time that you took to do the research on your subjects it makes it makes a difference and it shows yeah and, and uh you should be proud of that but um it just it just it seemed like a more in-depth thing than a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, podcasts or a lot of music interviews you just took the time and it showed yeah, well, I appreciate that. And yeah, there's because as as a consumer of content, there's nothing more boring to me than the oh well, how did you get your band name question? Like, you know, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Like, yeah, that's you know, let, let's go deeper than that. You know, let's find out you know what makes you tick and how that translates into the music. You know, that's really that's really what we've come to. You know, especially over the, since I got to Nashville. And in 2018, you know, we've been doing this show here since 2019. And it's it's about that depth. It's about helping our audience know you better. So thank you for giving us that opportunity. And let's get to know you better. And let's go back. Let's go all the way back. As far as you want to go, you can go back to the beginning. Tell us about the people, places, experiences, of course, artists that influenced your creative path, inspired you on this journey. I mean, you had mentioned at the top of the show that you feel just put on earth to do music and have felt that way for a long time. So who and what kind of shaped you and kind of guided you along that path? 
Sure. Um, really good question. So I think right off the bat, uh, I can't talk about my musical story without talking about an individual that's really important to me and special to my music journey. I wouldn't be here without him. But his name is Yildirim, and he's actually uh, um, the way he came into our lives was uh, he was a um, uh, an au pair at the time, and I think I was um, four years old, and my sister was two and a half, and um, my mother and father are, uh, or at least at the time, were uh, were uh, pharmacists, so they wanted to bring in some help. Um, uh, for to you know to have somebody around for my my sister Anna and I when they were at work and they brought in this foreign exchange student au pair guy uh Yildi and uh turns out he was kind of a he was actually a professional musician in in Turkey and you know he spent a year with my family and in that year you know first first few days it sounds like he sat down with my parents and he was kind of like listen this kid works totally differently you know mm -hmm. the way he listens to music, the way music catches his brain, it catches its attention. And he just, I think he noticed that immediately. And uh, he's like, I think it's, this is worth investing in. Let's, let's do a little social experiment. And he bought me my own drum set and my own guitar. And by the time I was, he only spent a year with me. So by the time I was five, I was already really comfortable on the drums, you know? Okay. So, um, it was just weird that he noticed that immediately and he just kind of decided to try it and it stuck. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How amazing, like sometimes all you need though is that one person to see that light inside of you, right. To, to like see something and help you foster that. And you were fortunate to have that at such an early age. That's an, that's an incredible story. So, you know, from that young age, you know, going through childhood, adolescence, you know, what was that journey like? Oh, um, you know, it's really interesting. I, I think I had a pretty challenging childhood in the sense that um, I was called, kind of always doing my own thing. Um, I, I seemed to like miss the miss the meeting that everybody else went to on like how to fit in. <laughs> you know, there seemed to be one meeting that happened and everybody attended, but I wasn't at that. And, and that kind of um, that kind of transferred into my uh, kind of never left me, you know, I kind of just decided at an early age, well, if it's this hard to kind of like, you know, have friends and, and, and fit in, then maybe I'm just going to find something that I can do by myself. And turned out I kind of already had that, which was music, but it took me a little while to kind of come around and return to it and find its importance in my life again. Um, uh, but I think, yeah, I think a lot of my early years was just shaped by trying to find myself in something that made me really happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so who were some of the artists, you know, growing up that you listened to that really shaped your taste that, you know, informed your musical interests? Oh, man, I'm trying to think of trying to give you a list, a short list of people who I was listening to right as I was putting out my first, uh, my first album out in like back in 2010. I was listening to a lot of Panic at the Disco. Okay. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so at the, at that time they had like both of their sounds, they had kind of the more intense um, cabaret type feel and then they had their like pretty odd feel which was kind of you know they were trying to it's very pretentious but uh they were trying to do a whole new beatles thing i think they were exploring themselves and i got mm -hmm. very into that because i was young and impressionable mm -hmm. but um um panic at the disco i'd say guys like mgmt um uh group love mm -hmm. uh kind of a lot of those guys made their way into my brain i think and um and probably changed the way i thought about making music as well 
Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think those acts too, like, you know, cause they were, you know, those were the big acts on like the alt rock stations back at the beginning of the 2010s. You know, that was the time I was, I was fresh out of college then and rock music was changing. You know, it was them. It was like foster the people, you know, then you had the folkier side with Mumford and sons and like, you had all these different sounds and ideas coming into the rock world at a time where the rock world, I think really needed that. You know, and there were there weren't really as many guitars, you know, featured as prominently, but there it was a lot, a lot more multi layered soundscapes, a lot more experimentation happening, especially in like that electronic sense. Uh, you know, MGMT, of course, being such a prime example of that, you know, from that 2010 2011 era, you know, and really its own unique and I think underappreciated era, you know, that early 2010s alternative, you know, and you still hear so much of that making its way into modern music today and you know those sounds have kind of evolved i think a lot of that's given it's you know given rise to sort of this new wave revival that's happened you know because people keep playing with these soundscapes you know it's it's about creating a soundscape you know in in a lot of the alternative music world i mean is that something that you would say informs your sound now too with your genre as you evolve through these projects oh my gosh uh completely um, most definitely. And, uh, and one of the last things you said is it's about creating a soundscape, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's huge. That's actually, uh, 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 something that, uh, we spend time on alone on itself. You know, we, we got to create something that sounds like, um, you know, we're creating space here. Um, almost like a three dimensional space, not just space itself, but yeah, you're creating a soundscape. It's, it's, that's exactly. Um, that's very, uh, very relevant. Um, so we, we mentioned some of those artists, you know, from that era. So who right now, uh, is inspiring you, you know, who's maybe come on here in the past three, four years and how, how is their music? How is what they do inspiring your creative process? Sure. There's been, um, see, I, so, so I'm a pretty open, open book when it comes to, when it comes to genres and, and, and styles. So I'm kind of all over the board from like, um, punk to maybe like, um, bedroom pop, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that goes, that goes into the music, but, um, uh, I think that, you know, maybe the fact that I can listen to so much music mm -hmm. just kind of allows me to, um maybe pick up pick up more uh uh like you're not pigeonholing yourself you know like some people like they yeah. like one thing you know and like so everything sounds like that you know but like you're pulling from all across the spectrum you know painting from this broad palette right i think that's exactly what i was trying to say is like it's you know the more you expose yourself to i think the more resources you're also giving yourself to pull from later at, at, at a later date you know right um, yeah yeah I mean, there's something to be said for that you know because i've you know being here in nashville too you know like and everybody kind of thinks like nashville is like the country music place and it is you know right. I, that's that's what put nashville on the map but there's so much else going on here there's a huge pop scene hip-hop's really come on in the past few years of, of course you have all of your rock bands around here and like so many of these different genres intersect, you know, and you see, you know, you not only have that here locally, but, you know, being Music City, you're pulling from places like New York and L.A. People are coming here from there. Austin, of course, you know, Austin's only about a 12 hour drive from here. So there's a lot of that exchange that happens, you know, and you like it broadens your palate. It forces you to broaden your palate, you know, because like me, like in my position, like. I have to understand everything that's happening on the landscape. You know, if I were to just stay in like one genre, like if I were to stay in country or rock or hip hop, like that would be not telling the whole story of what this ecosystem is. And it really is an ecosystem. And, you know, in a lot of ways we're fighting the same battle, you know, maybe in a different way, it sounds different, you know, our unique individual experiences are different, but we're all trying to build something, you know, community, of course, being so important. And so you've had a chance to build community out there in St. Louis, you know, as well, uh, you know, playing out, you know, just 
mixing it up with some of the other local bands on your scene. What is the St. Louis music community like? And how have you kind of found your way and integrated into that? Great question. It's very diverse. We have um, people like, uh, well, any, any, any music scene is going to be diverse. Uh, we're just diverse in the, in the, um, in the parochial ways, if you will. Like we have a lot of kind of like river city blues feel here. So um, we have an artist that's kind of uh, emerged out of not only St. Louis in the Midwest, um, People may know him elsewhere. He's called like Pokey Lafarge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's kind of like, you know, um, got that old school, maybe 1940s feel about him. And maybe that's inaccurate of me to quote 1940s feel. Maybe he'd say something completely different. But um, that's what it gives. It it, it gives me that, that feel. Um, and then we have, you know, like I said, we have a lot of like very serious like bedroom pop that people people make in their bedroom and they bring out and play at shows and that's it's very effective and um and then we have a lot of like then we have a lot of blues here mm -hmm. um and then we have a lot of uh we actually have a lot of hardcore music here we have a pretty serious hardcore feel so um oh man what was the question again quinn so, well, how, do, how does all that come together? And, you know, what is that community like? You know, you mentioned hardcore. I, I actually did see that video on Instagram of uh, the one uh, the one guy from that band wearing your shirt, you know, and it's like, uh, it, you know, it shows that like, you know, no matter your genre, like there's, there's room for everybody, you know what I mean? And there's this room to support the other people in your scene because we are fighting that same battle. And so, you know, my question really is, you know, how do how does the St. Louis community unite and galvanize, you know, when you have this diverse ecosystem, you know, and how do you how do you build that community and support each other and help that rising tide raise all boats? Yeah, th thanks for the reminder, man. I got I got so so excited about what I was saying, but um that's a that's a great actual example to bring me back on the topic that that uh my my friend uh Kurt Mraz from um from Sacrifice the Sacred, you know. Uh, wearing my shirt while he was just making the content of his own. But that's a that's actually a perfect example of St. Louis right there. If you want to talk about it, it's kind of that. It's um it's you know, it's uh people that you would never it, it's a weird mix of people, people you would think would never mix um and, and appreciate each each other's crafts. Um uh doing exactly that. You know, we're right. we're just we're an odd group of people from very separate corners, but when we come together, we just have a mutual respect for what each other does. Yeah. Um, well, I think as creatives too, like that oddness draws us together, right? Like there's, there's something to be said for kind of being the misfits, you know, from wherever you come from. Right. And like, you know, just having, you know, this common thread among you that, hey, that's me, like you recognizing that in each other, you know, and recognizing like that drive towards something else, drive towards something, you know, that's not the status quo. And, you know, you have musicians, creatives, like a lot of times we find ourselves in that position, right, where we are, you know, we're, we're kind of the square pegs in the round holes back home or, you know, back within our initial ecosystems, right, but then we come into this and find all the other weirdos. And I say that as a term of endearment and it's, yeah. it's, it's the best thing. I mean, Nashville is a great example of that too. Cause you, I mean, you've got people here from everywhere, all over the country, all over the world. And it's like, what's the common thread. We thought we could come here and make a run at something, you know, you don't run into too many natives anymore. You do run into some, but like for the yeah. most part, it's people from everywhere, different circumstances, different walks of life coming together and, you know, taking part in something greater than themselves. There's such a beauty to that though, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's kind of like, well, this isn't where we started. This might not be home, but this is where we're choosing to make our go of it. And there's, there's just kind of like an organic beauty to that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And as you go through that journey too, you find your people, you know, and you find the people that resonate with you. And, you know, it's a, it's kind of a filtering process, you know, you have to sift through, you know, you have to, you have to make some mistakes, you know, before you truly find your tribe, as they like to say these days, you know, but event you stick, you stick with that long enough and you keep refining your processes and coming to understand who you are and that you're going to find that tribe, that tribe's going to find you, you know, and that's where the 
exciting creative exchange really starts to come into play you know that ability to just share ideas and create amazing things and you had a chance to create something amazing actually not in st louis but out in kansas city uh recently at umkc conservatory and that is well the first uh of what you were working on out there is sound silences which is available everywhere now as a premiere date so you had a chance to work with uh, some student producers out there and of course work with um your bandmates on crafting this ep around these songs that already exist and presenting them differently so let's talk about the creative process what it was like working out there at umkc and what that process revealed to you about the music itself yeah uh we were extremely lucky to 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 be uh to be wrapped up in this project it just kind of started um as a as a tentative thing and somebody you know somebody might need a somebody might need us for some studio time in in the near future and then that turned into um positively needing us um for for some select dates and um it was so nice to go down there um kind of with the specific idea that we were gonna we were going to uh bring into the studio songs that had kind of evolved through the live set you know mm -hmm. so um my band members and i had been playing these songs from um i think it was the 2020 album man in full mm -hmm. uh we were playing a handful of those and just got to a um, pretty interesting kind of cross section where they were they were clearly taking on a life of their own and I think we were just comfortable with them enough and had played them enough to where they were just kind of becoming something of our own kind of off of off of the record outside of the record so um so we said yeah I think it makes sense in the timing that we would you know choose to um choose to accentuate those so we uh um we picked about uh three originals mm -hmm. that we thought um you know were not uh just you know easy listening and also um had 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 reached um a different place in their in their in their journey and uh put them down mm -hmm. um and that actually uh ended with we ended with one original uh ended with one original track too that um when i say original i'm brand mean, new brand new we wrote we wrote um as a collective and i guess the reason that is significant is because um from this from 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 the point of uh conception to to pretty much 2023 dear genre has been only me mm -hmm. right right Music. so i i guess i say that and it sounds confusing to the audience but what i really mean is we really did this ourselves instead of just me yeah so what do your bandmates bring to the equation that you know what 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 are they bringing new to the equation that maybe wasn't there before like how have they helped inform the sound not only of this project but of what's coming down the pike yeah uh well it's it's really nice to kind of uh they're almost like sounding boards if you will mm -hmm. you know so so uh after doing after doing uh music and 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 shows and, and productions for so long it, it becomes kind of like monotonous to be in a room with yourself by yourself right but then you know to have other real life human beings with a pulse in the room ch changes things uh from the get-go just just having a pulse in the room is like whoa yeah and then having uh having having kind of their creative um um histories and their you know what they know about music uh come into uh my songs my pre-existing songs kind of informs those songs and it kind of makes them uh you know a lot of times i i found that it made them something that it, they weren't before and i was very open to that yeah uh, uh a lot of times these songs became a lot better when when these guys were putting their flair on it yeah and um, 
I just stopped questioning after a while. Just, yeah. Yeah. I think after a while too, you know, when you've been doing something by yourself for so long, you know, and I've experienced this too with the whole UMC ecosystem, you get to a point where it's like, all right, I've done all I can do with this by myself, you know, like to evolve, you need fresh ideas to come in, new, new perspectives to come in, different energy brought to the project. And that's what your collaborators can bring to the project. You know, they come at, they can come at it from a completely different place, from a completely different perspective, hear something, see something that you don't in your music, just in the, in the whole creative process. And that could be the thing that really takes it, you know, from here to there, you know, to the, to the next level, you know, and speaking of the creative process, was there a moment like that, that stands out to you as like a favorite moment from the creative process or as something where, you know, you kind of saw the light bulb go off, you know, where maybe it hadn't before. Uh, well, we were lucky to, we really, um, I'd say we really jived with our producers in this process, you know, uh, Sam and Daisy were really excellent. Um, uh, not only I think did they understand where we were coming from sonically, but maybe, um, maybe just kind of as people too. So, you know, uh, there were a few standout moments from the making of Sound Silences, I think. Um, we really felt like we grew into like from a, I felt like I grew from a one piece unit to like kind of a beyond um, even the band members. And I felt like everybody was involved in the band now. Yeah, I felt yeah. like it was a five, five piece entity. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe not one specific standout moment, but I just remember, you know, being in the control room thinking like, wow, um, it's really, it's really been crazy to see, um, you know, what, what a few brilliant minds or a few, a few fresh ideas at least can, uh, can, can create um, when we sit down together and, and, uh, and really stick it to it. Um, yeah. And I think too, like just having, again, that energy, that, that sense of like, this is bigger than me now, you know, like yeah. look at what this has turned into, you know, like you have, you know, you have the project as it was, you know, and then you have it take on this whole new life, you know, that continues, of course, you know, past sound silences. Uh, there's a full LP coming out as well uh, here in the near future. So how is that a continuation of the work that you've done here so far, the work that you did out at UMKC and what can we expect? Is there any idea when we can expect it? Yes, for both um, answers for both. So we, uh, we actually recorded these all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So this, this sounds and silences is actually um, from the same sessions. We just, you know, decided to uh, all recorded at the same time, just decided that, um, they're going to be, you know, we're going to kind of be, um, breaking it up, um, um, in its release. Um, I think a big part of that was, um, kind of the order in which we recorded it. You know, these sounds and silences are pretty much, uh, our first, I think for the most part, our first visit down there. So I think for the most part, it's what we got done first. Um, and then the LP to come, let's see, um, should only be another month or two. If I'm being serious, yeah, it should only be another month or two from this this point where we find ourselves now. But um, but I'm still kind of um, um, you know enjoying. I mean, the sound of silence has just came out, so I'm just enjoying um, enjoying where I'm at with this. Yeah. 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 You know? Well, yeah, there's something to be said for being in that present moment, you know, and, and taking what you can from that moment to inform the path forward, you know, and no matter what, you know, you have this, you have more great work to come, you know, you have something else coming down the pike that people are going to have a chance to connect with and understand dear genre as it is now in 2023 from a listener perspective, what do you hope that, listeners take from the new music what how do you hope they connect with it or is that really up to them in your estimation yeah i i like that you added that part because um uh i think when i was younger i i, I would 
I would I would usually try to come up with an answer, you know, or leave people with something. But yeah, I think the older I've gotten, the more I've realized that it, it really is up to them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I can just kind of, um, I think my job stops when the music is made. Right. And that's all I'm here for, maybe. You know? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a that's a fair point, you know, because at the end of the day, you can't control people's reactions, you know, <laughs> like to anything in life. Well, you know, especially to the art, like you made the art, you know, as a moment in time, it's, it's time stamped, like, this is what this was, this is what this project was, you know, at the time that it was made and how people are going to receive that is up to them. And I mean, you can always take that feedback, right? Uh, one way or another, but at the end of the day, like, you know, it's, it is up to the listener. It is, you know, beauties in the eye of the beholder in that sense, right? To where, you know, as fans too, you know, surely we have projects that, you know, we have really gravitated toward and gravitated back toward over time from you know, the artists that we admire, you know, and some, sometimes, you know, an artist releases something that we're really looking forward to and it lets us down, you know, the, in the inverse of that. And I think like at the end of the day, you know, are you satisfied with your art? Are you satisfied with the process and the output and where it's led you so you can do the next thing? You know, I think that's really, you know, as artists, like, you know, there's, there's no finish line. You know, we say that all the time here on the show, and there's always something new to create. And so you have a chance now to, you know, go from Sounds and Silences, go from, you know, whatever comes from here and continue creating, just continue on this journey and continue to build that out. So, and the journey, of course, also includes live shows. Uh, you've got one coming up here on, I think you said March the 11th, right? So tell us about that and any other uh, live plans you have for us. Yeah. Thanks for remembering. On March the 11th, we'll actually be in Lawrence, Kansas at the Replay Lounge. So if you're a Kansasin, if you're a Kansasin. Kansan, I think. I think it's Kansan. Kansan? Kansan. Okay. It, it, it sounds like like it shouldn't be that easy, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, I feel like you got away easy with, by saying Kansan. But if you're a Kansan, come out um, March 11th to the replay lounge we'll be there i think starting at 7 p.m beautiful beautiful so mm -hmm. plenty of opportunities across the midwest to interact with dear genre now going forward here you know i'm gonna ask you kind of the existentialist question before we uh start <laughs> to conclude here so what's one lesson that you've learned throughout the entire course of your creative journey throughout the entire course of your life because i think they've run pretty much concurrent <laughs> that yeah. you know you would impart to somebody starting out or somebody looking to take that leap into exploring their gift whatever that gift is hmm man that's a great question nah, i hit you with the heavy one <laughs> <laughs> i think i would uh yeah, I know exactly what I'm going to say, um, which is so rare, um, especially to a heavy question like this. But I think I would probably say that just, I know you're trying to do a thing. I know it seems very serious and like there's no time but the now maybe, but um, I think one thing somebody could have told me when I was just starting out is maybe to slow down a little bit and treat every opportunity like it's 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 its own moment in time because I think if I would have been able to slow down and focus on individual opportunities I think I would have been able to learn a lot more um I think I was just so in, in, in involved in kind of like a go, go, go mentality. I know where I want to be, but I'm not there yet that I think I just kind of like put blinders on mm -hmm. and I just knew what I wanted. But I think if I would have slowed down and paid a little bit more attention to the things that were happening around me, I would have been, been able to not only learn the music industry faster, but I would have been able to maybe come up with more individual or uh, more, 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 um, more creative opportunities and ideas just from, right. from seeing the things around me. So maybe slow down. Yeah. You miss a lot when you're not present, right? When you're just on to the next, on to the next, on to the next, I've had to teach that to myself and sometimes still do where it's like, 
you're so focused on just getting there, wherever there, there is in the abstract anyway. There is not actually, you know, a point that exists at this moment in time. You know, I, I don't think there's really a point of arrival, you know, as much as it is like, you're going to be where your actions every day take you. So it's, you know, it's enjoying those moments, enjoying the process of that, learning from the process of that, you know, because not everything's going to go according to plan, <laughs> as you and I both know, <laughs> nothing, you know, like, you know, 10 years in, you know, on, on this end, like never, ever, ever would have expected the journey this has been, but like by, you know, and the moments where I really have been present and I really have taken in the lessons that were there are the moments that led to breakthroughs and the moments that led to better ways of doing things. I'm still finding that now, you know, and I think we're all, we're, we all struggle with that because, you know, the nature of our society, especially 21st century, everything's on demand. Like, we have feel this need to keep up and we feel this need to just like keep marching forward, take no prisoners, but it's not even about taking prisoners. It's about not becoming this prisoner of this mindset, you know, that, you know, you just have to go forward, crush everything. And you don't have time to pay attention to those details because the details have the clues on where you're meant to go and are going to direct that compass, you know, are going to direct your compass more toward what's in alignment with you. And it seems like, you are well on your way toward alignment and perhaps already there, sir. So congratulations to you for that. I'm really excited for what's to come. And of course, Andre Cataldo, dear John, are joining us here on the Quinn Spin. Uh, before we uh, sign off and I sign off, I'm going to let you tell the people where they can learn more about you online. Yeah, so you can head over to www.deergenre.com. That's kind of uh, where, you know, everything is in one place at one time, but we're also on Facebook and we're also on Instagram and we're also, you know, we try to be social, mm -hmm. but uh, if you want one place, kind of one time, www.deergenre.com. All right. Make sure you check it out. Sounds and Silence is out and available everywhere now and more to come throughout the year and this has been the quinn spin two ends in quinn two ends in spin find us on spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, anchor stitcher youtube and more also on the socials namely instagram at quinn spin official that's really the one we pay attention to we're on facebook and twitter as well though uh, underground music collective as well go to undergroundmusiccollective.com our central hub for all things independent music creativity community and more umc's on all those socials instagram facebook twitter linkedin youtube of course Follow the UMC 20 playlist on Spotify. That's got 20 fresh tracks every week and the latest episode of this very podcast. NashLive.live. We've got shows coming up. Actually got one on March 10th up at the Holistic Connection in Madison, Tennessee. That's a little birthday bash. Songwriter night I'm throwing for myself and for UMC. And it's going to be a great time. Come on out $10 in advance or at the door. More to come from National Live throughout the year, but until then, I'm going to sign you off with Rebel Nine's All I Become, our opening theme song, which is also our closing theme song. I'm going to take us out, just like it brought us in, and I'll see you next time. I'll take you now. Now I